On the 30th of July 2008, 22-year-old carnival worker Tim McLean boarded his Greyhound Canada bus to return home to Winnipeg. He would never make it. Seated next to him was 40-year-old Chinese man Vince Lee. Lee, a paranoid schizophrenic, believed himself to be the second coming of Jesus and that aliens were infiltrating the earth and it was his job to stop them. Worse yet, he believed Tim McLean was one of these aliens sitting next to him. What later happened on the bus that day would be truly disturbing. Just reading my book, and all of a sudden I heard it. It was like something uh, between a dog howling and a baby crying. I guess you could say it was. I don't think I'll, it'll be. It'll leave me for a while. Uh. In the aftermath of the horrific story you're about to be told, Vince Lee told his psychiatrist he had heard the voice of God. The voice called him the third story of the Bible and the second coming of Jesus, destined to save humanity from an alien invasion. The voice often ordered him to cross Canada by bus or on foot, and his wife confirmed he often did so. In 2005, three years before the incident, the Ontario police had picked him up as he wandered down a highway to Winnipeg. When asked what he was doing, he said he was following the sun at the command of God. On the 29th of July 2008, Vince Lee, who had been fired from his job at Walmart only a month earlier, left his home in Edmonton, Alberta. Boarding a Greyhound Canada bus, he intended to reach Winnipeg, Manitoba. With him, he carried three pieces of luggage. However, due to his yet-to-be-diagnosed schizophrenia and his belief that an alien invasion was imminent, he went nowhere without his buck knife. This journey would be no different. At around 6pm that night, after reaching Ericsson, Manitoba, he exited the bus and spent the night on a bench outside a grocery store. On the morning of July 30, still at the bench, he sold his new laptop computer to a 15-year-old boy for $60. Police would later seize the laptop and the boy would be compensated. On that same day, the 30th of July 2008, 22-year-old Tim McLean boarded Greyhound Canada Bus 1170 from Edmonton to his home in Winnipeg. He took a seat near the back of the bus. McLean, a carnival worker, was ending a seven-week tour on the Western Canada Carnival Circuit. Having completed the Klondike Days expedition in Edmonton, his travelling carnival's next stop was Regina in Saskatchewan. However, Tim was headed home early in preparation for his upcoming move to British Columbia. Always keen to document his travels to share with loved ones back home, he was described as not shy, made friends with everyone and impossible not to like. Excited to get home after so long away, that night, he planned to go to his friends to fetch his pet iguana. However, Perhaps what he was most excited about was that in just five months, he would become a father. After departing Edmonton, Greyhound Bus 1170 would take the Yellowhead Highway through Saskatchewan and onto Winnipeg. Despite offers from friends to pay for a plane ticket, the 22-year-old declined the offer, preferring to take the bus instead. 600 miles and roughly 12 hours later, Greyhound Canada Bus 1170 arrived in Ericsson, Manitoba. This is where a chain of events began which would permanently change the lives of all those on board. Having stopped for the night the day before, Vince Lee rejoined the 1170 for its final run to Winnipeg. Born in 1968, 40-year-old Vince Lee graduated in computer science at the Wuhan Institute of Technology in China. Immigrating to Canada in 2001, he gained citizenship in 2006. To support both himself and his wife, he started working at the Grant Memorial Church, and it was then that he converted to Christianity. After moving to Edmonton in 2006, he worked at several jobs ranging from a mechanic to a janitor and even McDonald's. His most recent job, however, was at Walmart, where he had been fired just four weeks earlier. 
and despite reports he'd been diagnosed with schizophrenia before the incident, this was not the case. However, unbeknownst to all around him, he was a very unwell man. At around 6.55pm, Greyhound Bus 1170 departed Ericsson for the roughly three-hour run to Winnipeg. Vince Lee sat near the front, while Tim McLean remained near the back. However, at the stop in Brandon around one hour later, Lee changed seats. Taking a seat next to Tim, Tim acknowledged him before putting on his headphones, leaning back up against the window and falling back to sleep. As the bus headed east on the Trans-Canada Highway, approaching the small city of Portage La Prairie, the serene atmosphere filled with the sound of the movie Zorro playing on the bus TV screen was disrupted by what witnesses later described as a blood-curdling scream. Vince Lee, out of nowhere, had pulled out his buck knife and had begun repeatedly assaulting Tim in his chest, throat and neck. According to some reports, Tim, the smaller of the two men, attempted to fight back, but immediately fell to the floor as he tried to save his own life. However, Vince Lee did not relent. Described as strangely calm by those who saw him do it, he continued to repeatedly and mercilessly attack Tim, who, up until only a few moments before, had been fast asleep, and everyone else on the bus was powerless to stop it. Uh, I told everybody to get off the bus. Everybody started to get off the bus. Uh, uh, everybody got off the bus. Me and a trucker that had stopped and the Greyhound driver uh, ran up to the door to, to maybe see if the, the guy was still alive or we could help or something like that. And, 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 we all, and he up. saw us. He, he came back to the front of the bus, told the driver to shut the door. Uh, he pressed the button and the door shut, but it didn't shut in time, and the guy was able to get his knife out and take a swipe at us, so we backed off the door, and uh, I ran around the back side of the bus, the bus driver took off, and then we both returned to the front to see what had happened, and he, he hadn't gotten off the bus, the door was still open. When they returned to the front, they saw Lee had remained on board, and was now decapitating the victim. The driver locked the door from the outside and immobilised the bus. Although safe from Lee, who was locked inside, those who dared to look were shocked to see he was now cannibalizing the victim. At around 8.30pm, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police in Portage La Prairie, around 19 miles away, got report of the incident, and by 9pm were at the scene. Passengers were taken to nearby Brandon, while police negotiators entered into a standoff with the suspect. Over the next four and a half hours, an armed tactical unit of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police tried to convince Lee to give himself up. However, pacing the length of the bus, observed by police still cannibalizing his victim, he refused to give himself up. At around 1.30am, Lee smashed a window and attempted to escape. Upon his exit, he was abruptly tasered, handcuffed and arrested. One can't help wondering whether the standoff might have been shorter had it happened south of the border. The unprovoked and violent attack on a Canadian bus sent shockwaves across the nation, resonating globally and capturing world headlines. The sheer brutality of the incident left people in shock and caused widespread disbelief. In the weeks following the incident, Greyhound Canada pulled a series of nationwide advertisements, one of which included the slogan, There's a reason you've never heard of bus rage. While police initially suspected the event of having been a random act of violence, this was disregarded after Lee underwent a psychiatric assessment by his court-appointed psychiatrist, Stanley Yaron, who determined Lee had undiagnosed paranoid schizophrenia. Lee told Yaron he had converted to Christianity after hearing the voice of God. The voice called him the third story of the Bible and the second coming of Jesus, destined to save humans from an alien invasion. Charged with second-degree murder, the trial commenced on the 3rd of March 2009. Pleading not criminally responsible on the account of a mental disorder, he accepted the offence occurred, but claimed he was unable to form the necessary mental element. Stanley Yaron said his patient's schizophrenia rendered him inculpable, as he had been under the false belief that McLean was a force of evil and posed an imminent threat to himself and others. In Lee's mind, McLean was an alien in disguise who needed to be destroyed. Both the defence and prosecution agreed with this assessment and favoured a mental institution rather than time in prison. 
The judge accepted Lee was not criminally responsible and assigned him to a mental health facility near Selkirk. In 2011, Vince Lee's doctor announced he was responding well to his psychiatric treatment and recommended he received more freedoms phased in over several months. In 2012, Lee was granted supervised visits to the town of Selkirk. That same year, Lee spoke publicly for the first time, sharing that his condition was improving and he was learning about schizophrenia and ways to cope with it in a healthy manner. He affirmed his guilt, saying, he can never forget the Greyhound bus and acknowledged McLean's family likely won't forgive him. He went on to say, I would like to say to Tim McLean's mother, I am sorry for killing your son, I am sorry for the pain I have caused, I wish I could reduce that pain. Fast forward to March of 2014, almost seven years after the incident, Lee was awarded the right to have unsupervised visits to the nearby town of Selkirk, which would eventually extend to day outings to Winnipeg. In 2016, he had his name changed to Will Lee Baker and requested to live independently. Mr. Lee, or the former Mr. Lee, I should say, uh, was held not criminally responsible on account of his mental illness. That mental illness has since been treated, and in the expert opinion of his, of his physicians, uh, he is in recovery. Uh, so I don't believe that there's any risk to the public here, um, and I'm taking the lead from history. Uh, but in here. Canada, we do believe that, um, that, that justice is served uh, here. On the 10th of February 2017, the Manitoba Criminal Code Review Board ordered Lee be discharged. Lee was granted an absolute discharge with no legal obligations or restrictions. This, to say the least, was not well received by the family of his victim and others. The psychiatric community states that they cannot predict the future behaviour of any individual. The same community claims the best predictor of future behaviour is past behaviour. I believe it's time for all people to take care of each other. I don't believe for one second that Will Baker poses no threat. He will be a risk to public safety for the rest of his life. What if he chooses to stop his medication again? In a nutshell, I don't believe that should be his choice to make anymore. A secure facility where he can continue to receive treatment for the rest of his natural life is where he belongs. Has everyone forgotten what he did to Timothy? How this murder has affected me personally, physically, mentally, financially and emotionally has been devastating beyond description. This has definitely been one of the more disturbing stories that I've ever covered and I'm interested to know your thoughts on the somewhat early discharge. If you found value in today's video, I'd love it if you subscribed and joined me for the next one. To watch my video about the Kolchuk Peak climbing accident in Washington State, you can click the link on screen. And as always, thanks for watching.